What's up, guys? I'm Alex. I'm Jason. We're the Table Monkeys, and we are here with a video to talk about the regrip. Uh, this is kind of, uh, I think this has become a little bit of a lost art in arm wrestling in the last couple of years because we've become so fixated on just raw power and being massive. Um, but the regrip is a huge part of arm wrestling. Uh, it's, it's one of the first things you learn in arm wrestling. Mm -hmm. And because arm wrestling is such a battle of micro uh, adjustments and micro leverages, uh, you can really sway uh, a match with a simple regrip if it's executed properly, right? Yes. And <clears throat> the whole point of a regripping is improving your position within the match because you can't finish them otherwise. You're stuck in the center or in a position where both people have, you've reached a balance point and you need to do something to improve your position or your opponent's going to improve theirs. Yeah. And you'll even see people do a regrip right off the go. Like some people's best hits are just a quick regrip before anything happens and then again they've improved their position so much it's unbalanced right right in the beginning and, yep. and as alex said the improving position that's really what the art of arm wrestling is the art of arm wrestling is getting a more efficient position than your opponent so that you can a use less power and be uh fatigue slower so your opponent is doing the opposite right exactly. um so it, it in regripping, there's a lot of different ways to do it. We're going to kind of cover two simple directions, but the two main ways to get uh, a regrip is either height or depth, right? So those are the two right. things so that we want to talk about. So yeah, higher on my opponent's thumb or reaching past it. Yes, exactly, right? Uh, and and as uh, in the match, what that's going to feel like is doing it to somebody. You want to feel like you're punching through and up through their hand. Or uh, that, like Alex said, getting past, or you should feel like this ridge of your of your hand. You feel like this freedom when you get past someone's thumb, and I know we both know that feeling when you get that in a match. It's like, all right, now, yeah. like good luck <laughs> because yeah. you're in there now, right? So again, feeling like you're busting up through the hand, or feeling like you're shoving past the hand. Those are the two main feelings that you're going for. Uh, this is we're gonna demonstrate this basically from a top roll position. Uh, you can do it in a hook and all that, but the top roll is the easiest to understand. And this, like Alex said, usually is when a match stops. This is the most common stop you'll see in a match is when both people are top rolling and the match just stops center of table, right? Um, but uh, we're going to imagine uh, that you're getting some, uh, like you're getting a hit across the table. I'm stopping it. And then you're coming back um, to, to make a regrip. Yeah. Right? So first, what most people do is the match stops. They go for a hit. They get a stop. They come back to the center. And they just keep hitting over and over again without making any, any adjustments. adjustments. Yeah. All right. So yeah. that's the mistake. Yeah. Um, now, what you want to do is obviously go for that hit. But when you come back, that's your opportunity. Anytime you come back to the center, that's the opportunity to improve your position. Exactly. So when I come back up. We're going to do height first. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to go for height. So I'm going to come back up. I'm going to start rising and opening my hand, punching forward and doing a little bit of a kickback. And that kickback is really going to force me to try to hang on to him, which is going to allow him to actually climb out of my hand even more. Yeah, and it, it also reduces his ability to adjust while I'm doing this move. Yeah, it's like creating a threat, right? Because now I'm worried about this guy getting out of my hand and I start to think about that. I'm not worried about this or this anymore. I'm, I'm all focused on what's happening in the hand. Yeah, exactly. So while he's holding on to me, it gives me the opportunity to then Clamp my fingers out on a higher position on his thumb. You can see how high my knuckle is now compared to his. And then I go for my hit. And I've got so much more leverage, access to more power, and I should get the pin. And if not, I can rinse and repeat. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And now uh, so the other way, getting depth, uh, is what I'll perform. So same thing. We get kind of stuck in the center. I go for a hit across. I find that I get a stop here. And like Alex said, I'll do the wrong way again, is if I just reset and then hit and then reset and then hit. But I'm making no adjustment. Um, <clears throat> If I want to get depth, the adjustment I'm going to make is, again, still pushing my elbow forward and trying to rise up through my knuckle like Alex was. But now I'm carving a bit and I'm trying to use some shoulder commitment to come across the table to then hit again. And I should get so much uh, of his thumb and so much higher on his hand when I do that. And again, that's the threat. So when Alex was rising and kicking back, the threat was in my hand. I'm hanging on. Now the threat is in the center of the table and making Alex feel like he's losing internal rotation, right? And yeah. as, he's, as he's worried about that, all of a sudden I'm climbing up 
his hand, and now I've gotten much better position. So again, improved position, right? Yes, and weaken my <laughs> position by a ton by by taking my pronation, putting me on my bicep, and getting gaining height. Where in the rising one, when Alex did it, the way he weakened my position was being so much in my hand that now it's like if I were to grab a dumbbell and uh, you know you were to say, oh no, you got to hold it at your fingertips. It's yeah. like, well, I can curl you know 100 pounds this way, but I can only do like 20 pounds this way. So that that's that's the uh, advantage that you're getting with the height, right? And now, um, <clears throat> so we talked about the threat. That's a big thing. If you don't create some sort of a threat, so what? Another thing that people get fixated on when they get stuck learning this regrip is they hit, they open their hand, but all they're doing is opening their hand, and like they're not actually creating a threat any other way, right? So uh, once you get familiar with, okay, I, I found a stop, I open my hand, and I try to gain something. The next most important thing to think about is some sort of threat. Yeah. Right? Otherwise, you you leave yourself open <clears throat> to be be countered, right? And that that typically happens. Let's say you go for the go for the drive. So I'm back gonna, and I'm gonna and you're yeah. You're not gonna create a threat. Yeah. So I'll go this way, and I just come up and raise my hand. And I'm just gonna immediately take that. Yeah. Right. Because he's got he's got no threat this way, no threat this way. So I'm just gonna take him out of position immediately because he's softened everything up. Yeah, because I've just focused so much on only opening my hand and I haven't created a threat. Right. And then um, I guess the last thing would be deciding which one of these you choose. And like mm -hmm. I said, or like I think it, maybe you said in the beginning, who whichever one of us said it, there's many different uh, regrips to choose from and you could learn a lot of different ones. These are just kind of two starting points. Um, but the basic fundamentals, again, we always talk about this uh, uh, pyramid of arm wrestling pressures on the table. So it kind of the same thing applies here. If you feel uh, that your opponent has more height than you, when you go to get height, it's good to push to the side because that's probably the threat that he's leaving more open. Right, so if it's me and Alex, when when I when I go for a regrip, I'm almost always doing this. I'm almost never going like this because if I commit this way and he he commits with me, I'm never gonna outrise him there. He's gonna end up beating me, right? So when I when I need to get height, I need to create some sort of side threat to get that height. And now uh, I don't know. Like I would definitely do the opposite. Yeah, I would yeah. totally go for that. Just get the kickback rise. Yeah. Because, exactly. because I'm more confident in winning the rise game yep. and not, not really want to putting, put my frame on a line against you, yeah, even exactly. if I can get an advantage. And, and that kickback is what protects you from me like coming across. Because if I try to come across, I'm just going to lose so much hand that once he re-grips again, like, yeah, he's, he's bringing me back across, right? So, um, and then as far as the strap is concerned with these moves, uh, the strap changes things uh, as far as how much of an effect you're going to get out of a regrip, but it doesn't really change the fundamentals of it. Like they still, the pressures still work the same way. You still want to get them. If you get a little bit of advantage, it's going to play out big. So, um, so yeah, I think they're uh, maybe harder to do in the mm -hmm. strap, but you do them the same way. And yeah, they're, and they're the same science. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that's regripping. Very important for uh, becoming a martial arm wrestler. Yep. Learning how to fight once the match has stopped. Yep. Uh, let us know. Some feedback down in the comments, like, come, subscribe, all those things, and monkeys out. Peace.